grace, mercy, and peace to you in the name of God, our Creator, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I would be remiss if I did not start out by saying thank you. Thank you to you, Lord of Life Lutheran Church, for your faithfulness in ministry, especially in these days of the pandemic. Your commitment to the greater Depew community, to continuing to support the community food pantry, as well as continuing Matthew's table of feeding hungry people in your neighborhood and beyond, and for your mission support, which has increased. Thank you which is making a difference beyond a pew. I mean, in the Niagara Frontier Conference alone, you have helped to raise up three new pastors, all of whom graduated this year and have all received calls. The newest ones being Rick Mollenkopf Grill, who was called to serve Trinity in South Newstead and is gonna be ordained on August 22nd. And Sohel Akhtar, who was called to serve St. Peter in Medina and First English in Lockport. And of course, there's Pastor Miranda Hammer, who was ordained a few weeks ago and who is helping to build a brand new community on the east side of Buffalo, one of the poorest neighborhoods in all of upstate New York. You are helping to make that happen. And I am so grateful for your ministry and your generosity. Something else that you've helped to launch is Faithfully Learning and Teaching Together, or as we like to call it, FLAT. This is a synod-wide opportunity with new courses being offered regularly so that together as a synod across all of the miles that we can learn together. It all happens on Zoom and even beyond COVID, we imagine that we'll continue to gather on Zoom to learn together. And we've been offering all sorts of courses, um, art and spirituality courses, which are pretty popular. And I took a course on Dietrich Bonhoeffer uh, last month. And just last week, I launched a class that I'm teaching. It's called Speak Boldly, a look at the ELCA social statements. And in this class, we're talking about what it means to be the church in the public sphere. How do we engage in the big issues of our day and our world while staying in line with the love of Jesus and the will of God? How do we be faithful and speak boldly? In reality, what we're wondering about is how can we be advocates? And I don't think that it's a mistake that in the Gospel of John, Jesus calls the Holy Spirit an advocate. An advocate is someone who pleads in favor of a cause or an idea. An advocate is somebody who intercedes. And did you catch what Jesus said in there in the gospel reading? He is going to send another advocate. Another advocate necessarily means that the disciples already had an advocate. And that advocate was Jesus, God's advocate, God incarnate in the flesh and blood. And what was Jesus advocating for? If you've been to worship with Lord of Life these past few weeks, you might have already figured it out. Jesus was an advocate of love, God's love. Not that mushy, fickle, hallmark romance movie, rom love, kind of love, but the kind of love where someone will intercede on behalf of another, lay down their life for another. That kind of love. And that kind of love is God's love. That radical, life-changing, all-encompassing love that is God's love. Right at the beginning of our gospel reading, Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments or as I like to interpret it, if you love me, you will follow me in the way of love. Jesus is very clear about who and what people are and who they belong to. They belong to God and they are about to be, and they are to be about God. Jesus lived that way of love, taught the disciples the way of love so that they could then teach others the way of love. 
This is how the church grows, living and teaching the way of love that isn't about me first, that isn't about just sharing my leftovers, but the kind of love that Pastor Debbie talked about a couple of weeks ago, making the choice to love, thinking about how our words and actions and community and institutional systems affect another person, especially those who are on the margins of society. And if those effects help to produce life, or if those effects take life away from another. If those effects produce life, then it comes from the advocate, the Holy Spirit. But if those effects only produce life for some and even diminish the lives of people, especially those who are on the margins of society, then it does not come from the Holy Spirit. It comes from another spirit what the author of first john calls the antichrist now let's be clear the antichrist is not some political figure that's going to rise up and take over the world the antichrist is just that anti against christ or you could even look at it this way replacing christ you see the antichrist is the opposite of love is the opposite of life. The Antichrist or the spirit of deceit is in contrast to everything that is about God's way of love. And that spirit of deceit is so insidious and so seductive. It whispers in our ears and in the corner of our hearts to tell us that it doesn't matter if we pass that homeless person on the street and look the other way. It was their fault for being homeless in the first place. Or I don't need to give my money to the food pantry this month. My family is hungry too. Or it doesn't matter if I call someone a name on Facebook, they deserved it. They were being a troll. And let's not even get into the political ads that we're starting to see and the mudslinging that's already happening. That candidate deserved it. They don't believe what I believe and what I believe is right. And there it is. That's the rub. The I'm right and you're wrong. The certainty of knowing what God's way of love is and no one else could possibly know what that is. It is no more clearer of how hard it is to, to discern spirits than when we're talking about the big issues of today and what we should or should not be doing as Jesus people. Leaders on both sides of the aisle purport to be doing God's will. People on both sides of the aisle, like you and me, are so sure that we know what the will of God is. And so we're gonna, gonna just dig in and yell at one another on Facebook in conversations through memes and videos. Not much has changed in the nearly 2,000 years since the first community who read this letter from John. They were trying to figure out what love meant and how to know what was the way of God. John gave them a way to figure that out, sitting down and discerning spirits together sitting down and matching up things against God's way of love. And this is where it gets a little uncomfortable, friends. For folks who first read this letter, and for us, we are called to sit down together in community and test if what we believe, what we are advocating for, or what others are advocating for, for passes the test of love. And I'm gonna be honest with you. We are gonna get it wrong sometimes. We are going to be so convinced that we are right and what we are saying is the true way of God. But if that's the position that we're taking, are we truly allowing ourselves to be open to community discernment? What we may discover, if we really open ourselves up to it, is that what we want? is not actually in line with God's way of love. And that is hard 
and it's embarrassing and it's going to require a lot of humility. But if we really, really open ourselves up to this kind of communal discernment, our lives could change. They will be changed. The Holy Spirit, that spirit of truth, will change us through the wrestling with what it really means to be about the way of love. Sin so easily gets us to twist what it means to love. We're seeing it everywhere today. And I don't think it's no more prominent than in the Black Lives Matter movement and the pushback with words like all lives matter and blue lives matter. Of course, all lives matter, right? That's the way of love. And I come from a family of New York City police officers. My family lives have mattered. But for too long in this country, the spirit of deceit has been at work in the world. And it's been getting white folks like me to act like black lives do not matter. Even when we think we're doing the exact opposite. We are so caught up in the systems of oppression that have such deep roots and have put on the outer appearance of that vine that is Jesus. And for far too long in the church, we have not tested those spirits. We have not shaken that vine to see if it really is Jesus. However, our siblings in Christ who are black need us who are white to take up this hard work. COVID-19 has exposed these systems that have been set up by the spirit of deceit. And the question for us is, what are we going to do with this spirit? Just as Jesus did not leave the disciples orphaned, but sent another advocate to plead the case of God's love, so too is the Holy Spirit an advocate in our lives, pleading God's case and giving us the courage to join in this work of love. It's not going to be easy. I'm in a book study with one of our congregations here in Syracuse. And I have to tell you, I've gotten real uncomfortable because it has exposed the ways in which I have unwillingly and unwittingly participated in racist acts and systems. Even as I try so desperately to be an ally and speak up for my siblings who are black, indigenous, and other people of color. But if you know those words from that old Lutheran confession that I grew up with, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. Racism. We are bound up with that in this country. And I think for too long, we have let the spirit of deceit lead the way. But we need to be about this important work. And we're not alone in it. You have one another, right? Pastor Debbie has been real clear. Even if you're physically distanced and you're only getting together for in-person worship monthly right now, you are still the church together, the church without walls, and you have found all sorts of other ways to gather together as God's beloved people. And it's not just the people of Lord of Life that you have with you. The whole synod is with you in this work as we try to figure out what it means to be about the way of love. And most importantly in all of this, you have the Holy Spirit that promise from Jesus that Jesus would not leave us orphaned. That God's beloved, and you are God's beloved. That you will never be forsaken, and you will never be let go. That is the truth from the Spirit of Truth, from the Holy Spirit, the Advocate. And so my siblings in Christ, what are you going to do and how are you going to sit together and wrestle with what is
from the Spirit of God, the way of love, the way of life. Amen.